Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock market update for the week of January 15th, 2023. And oh dear lord, what a week it was. We had a lot of earnings, one specifically Netflix just I don't even know what happened with that. I made a stock analysis video on Netflix showing you guys the earnings and I'm like they completely bombed it they completely bombed it yet the share price rose massively we'll take a look at that in just one second but nonetheless guys the s p 500 after that netflix earnings rose massively as you can clearly see as of the 20th of january the s p 500 rose almost two percent however on the five day they still were negative i actually was not expecting that they were still negative by half of a percent dow jones rose one percent on the five day they were still down 2.22 percent and the nasdaq was the only one that ended the week positive at almost one percent at 0.85 percent but you can clearly see because netflix is in the nasdaq they gained 2.66 percent absolutely bonkers the nasdaq is just filled with hype and if you guys don't believe me take a look at this Nasdaq surges more than 2% as Netflix rallies S&P Dow on track to end higher. They did end higher, however, within the week, they still did not break that what it was in the beginning of the week. Obviously, as I just showed all of you guys, however, the Nasdaq did, and it's all because of Netflix, which gained 8.5% on the day, $26.72 to a current share price of $342.50. And by the way, guys, this isn't the only one either. For some reason, Google also gained 5.72% today, $5.37 to $99.28. Why did this occur with Google? Well, here's the reason why, guys. Why did Google stock go up today? Layoffs soothe investor nerves. Layoffs. Google is now laying off, guys, 12,000 employees. And it gained 6% because they're laying off 12,000 employees. I, I do not understand how these things correlate. I can make an assumption in that, well, seeing that they're going to lay off people, that's going to raise unemployment. Therefore, now the Fed will probably not raise rates. Those are like the only thing that I could think of with the fact that Google is seeing layoffs and therefore the share price goes up 6%. That's absolutely insane. It makes absolutely no, no sense. And if that's the case, if that is the reason why Google stock fell, man, when the Fed comes in on in February saying, no, here are the new interest rates, we're going to go to 5%, which by the way, a couple of the Fed voting chairs have already said that they want 5% and they're going to keep 5% for longer. They're not going to back down on that. When that sinks in that there is no pivot coming, this will probably come crashing down very, very quickly. Because if we're not at 5% yet and they're already having layoffs because they can't afford anybody. And then on top of that, when it comes to Netflix, they rise 8.46%. Even though they missed earnings massively. If you guys saw my earnings report, guys, earnings came in at 12 cents when they were expecting 50 cents per share. And they just barely met on revenue. If they're struggling with that even 5% interest rates, this is going to come down real, real quick when realizations sinks in but nonetheless guys the s p 500 still gained on the day almost two percent however on the five day they're still down half of a percent so now let's delve into the heat map to see which companies did the worst and which ones did the best per sector so we're here at the s p 500 one week performance and to my surprise i actually i was expecting a lot more green i like i was expecting like a sea of green this is pockets this is just like a few companies within each sector that rose the entire sector up what that's absolutely insane take a look at this starting of course with the technology sector apple gained 3.34 percent and microsoft gained 0.72 percent however in the whole entire sector take a look at this the best performer would actually have to be none other than nvidia gaining a whopping eight percent current share price of 178 dollars and 39 cents and the biggest loser would be in the solar industry and phase losing almost eight percent pretty much almost matching the opposite of what nvidia did losing almost eight percent at 222 dollars and 54 cents looking now at the communications sector as i said google gained massively and 
well, it was the biggest gainer in this whole entire sector, with a bunch of other companies gaining as well. But Google gained almost 8% to $98.02 after market went up significantly more. But nonetheless, you also had Meta gaining uh, almost 2%, Disney 3.68. Actually, 3.68 is not a tiny amount, guys. That's almost 4%, but in comparison to that of Google, it was just nothing. However, guys, we did have a big loser here, and that was none other than Lumen Technologies losing 13.6% to now a current share price of $5.22, with another company, Dish Network, losing 7.7% to a share price of $13.90. In the consumer cyclicals, we got one, <laughs> we got one emerald in here, and that is none other than Tesla gaining almost 8% to $133.42. However, we did also have a lot of red in the form of like GM as well as Ford. Both of them losing almost exactly the same at 7.7% and 7.8% for Ford and GM. And in fact, guys, the biggest loser was none other than GM in this whole entire sector, losing 7.78% to a current share price of $35.35. And I would just like to apologize because Tesla was actually not the biggest gainer. It was actually Expedia Group gaining 8% on the dot to a current share price of $111.30. Jumping into now the consumer defensives, this was a very, very red sector. I mean, just take a look at this. Pretty much Walmart, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Keurig, Costco, all of them fell. And by far the ones that fell the most was actually in the packaged foods and the worst performer would actually have to be GIS General Mills losing 6.14% to a current share price of $77.46 and the biggest gainer in this whole entire sector from what it's looking like would be Church and Dwight gaining 2.22% to a current share price of $83.20. Looking now into the financial sector, a lot of red here and again only pockets of green. Very very surprising. Again I was not expecting this. The biggest gainer from what it's looking like, guys, would be right here in the bank's regional industry, SIVB, SVB Financial Group, gaining a whopping 14.82%, $291.44. Other ones that were really, really good as well were First Republic Bank gaining 6.8%. You also had Signature Bank gaining 9.19%. Morgan Stanley, 6.31%. SYF, 5.45%. But obviously the biggest gainer would be SIVB and the biggest loser well surprisingly enough guys we actually had a few pretty big losers over here but the worst one I could see would be Allstate losing 8.33% to a current share price of $125.65 we got other ones like PNC I also put out a video on this one guys doing a stock analysis and their earnings as well they lost 8.26% Charles Schwab losing 7.73 and Goldman Sachs losing 7.6 coming over here now into the healthcare sector to my surprise a lot of red here like as you can clearly see when it came to the drug manufacturers only one was green and that was bristol myers squib but aside from that everything else was pretty much in the red or if not flat however when it came to the biggest gainer from what it's looking like guys would be rmd restmed gaining almost 9.7 percent to a current share price of 234 dollars and 73 cents and the biggest loser it's definitely going to have to be Pfizer, losing 5.45% to a current share price of $45.11. And now to, well, the reddest sector, to my surprise, the industrials. This one completely bombed. There wasn't, well... Yeah, when it came to like the specialty industry machinery, everything was red. Aerospace, everything was red. Farm, everything was red. And you only start to get green like right here at the bottom when it comes to these small market cap companies. The biggest gainer, guys, from what it's looking like would be JBHT, JB Hunt Transport Services, gaining 5.26% to a current share price of $189.10. And the biggest loser, this is going to be pretty difficult for me to find, would be EMR, Emerson Electric, losing almost 11% to a current share price of $87.35. But I mean, honestly, like everything here is pretty much of a big loser, right? I mean, you got major companies like Honeywell, 3M, ETN, TT, ROK, RTX, GD, NOC, all losing massive, massive amount of percent. Looking now into the real estate sector, kind of mixed, not gonna lie. However, when it came to the biggest gainer, guys, from what it's looking like, well, it would actually have to be host hotels and resorts gaining one point. 
to 1%. And the biggest loser would be American Tower, losing 4.65% to a current share price of $221.41. And I forgot to mention that host hotels and resorts was $17.61. Looking now at another massive, massively red sector and uh, to my surprise, again, one of the most defensives, actually, if not the most defensives, the utility sector lost a lot. We got the biggest gainer was only one company that was ETR gaining 0.56% to a current share price of $107.54. However, everything else was just in the red. And by the looks of it, the worst performer was EVRG EverG losing 6.7% to a current share price of $59.64. But you have other major companies like like Next Era Energy losing 3.82, Southern Company, which by the way, they just announced a dividend losing 4.6. Guys, it was absolutely bloody when it came to this sector. And now to the most meme worthy of all the sectors, the energy sector, at least is what it was in 2022. We'll see about 2023. This one is uh, kind of half and half. We did have a lot of green though. In fact, the best performer would be Valero Energy gaining 5.5% and the biggest loser would be the Williams Company, WMB, losing 4.55%. And lastly, looking at the basic materials, this one was kind of subpar, not really moving anywhere. However, the biggest gainer would be the Mosaic Company gaining 2.19% and the biggest loser would be International Flavors and Fragrances, IFF losing 2.8%. Overall, I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting a lot worse. Like I really, really was because after on Friday, it was, I was just like, what is happening? Everything just gained massively, 1%, 2%. It's, it was just incredible. So I was just like, I guess we're ending the week positive. However, as you can clearly see, we did not. It was only certain companies that really brought the entire market up. So that's very, very interesting. And in fact, my friend, Mikhail Kirsnowski, which he's now making videos on the channel, he was looking at it. He was looking at the market today on Friday when it was happening. And he was just like, there is no volume here. Market is going up with like no volume at all. At least that's just what he told me. Maybe he'll make a video about it. We shall see. But it's interesting because the fact that he's saying no volume and I'm looking at the entire S&P 500 here, I'm like, it didn't go up. It did not go up. It was only a couple of companies that brought it up by a massive, massive margin. It was only Nvidia, Google, Tesla, and, and a couple other ones that really brought it up. But aside from that, you can clearly see there is a lot more red than there is green. So we shall see what happens next week, guys, especially the beginning of February, which I believe the FOMC meeting is the beginning of February. So be on the lookout for that because that one's going to cause a lot of turmoil, at least in my personal opinion. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out and I will see you all in the next market update video.